G'day and welcome to number 10 in the brewery series videos. This time it's a swash beer and not just any swash beer, but the award-winning King River Helmet. So firstly, I'd like to say a big thank you to Nathan Munt, his family and all those at the brewery that allowed us to brew one of their recipes. And another big thank you goes out to my patrons because without them, these videos couldn't continue. And as a Patreon member, you'll get long, rough cuts of all my brew day videos, mistakes and all, such as this hour long cut of today's video. There'll be a link below in the description. But that's if you're interested in that. <laughs> that's enough talk though. Let's get into the beer. Let's pour this and have a look. Look at that humdinger. Oh, the aromas. There's some lovely malt coming off there. It's not too roasty at all, which is good. They're not meant to be. Oh, it's just lovely. Nice little off-white head. Tasty. As I said, there's a, there's a bit of roast there. Not too much. It's just a tasty, thirst-quenching beer. King River Brewing is award-winning and proudly independent as a family-owned business. Created by husband and wife team Nathan and Brianna Mutt, opened the rustic taproom door in November 2016 and haven't looked back since. And I met Nathan about six months later at the Bridge Road Brewers Hop Harvest Festival. And since then, I've run into him many times at different beer festivals, and he pours a damn good beer. Fast forward to today, and their beers have received multiple national awards. King River Brewing is in Whitfield, Victoria, which is about 80 minutes south of Albury, and that's about half an hour from Wang or Wangaratta, or about three hours north of Melbourne. So let's get straight into the brewing. This time I thought I would keep it local and use the Cheeky Peak TK36 litre system to brew the beer. Cheeky Peak are in Wodonga, about an hour away. I'm brewing a 23 litre batch or six gallon batch, and I'm starting with 22 litres of water. And you want to use a fairly balanced water profile of around that 40 to 50 parts per million of your chloride and your sulfate. You may notice here that I've moved one of the valves. I've moved the recirc valve to above the table or on top of the table. So it's just easier to get to when you want to turn off that recirc through the top. Okay, so at the moment I have this on. And this I'm not on full because if you're on full it will squirt out of there and you'll pick it up and you'll get squirted, which is not fun. But just like any system at all, anywhere, even if you haven't got a pump, you should be stirring at least a couple of times once you're up the temperature, just to make sure that temperature evens out. Stir it, leave it a few minutes, stir it again, and you'll make sure that your strike temp is right. And then whatever system you have won't have to work to keep temp very much. Once you get your grain in, it should all be good. But it's time to get the grain in here. Let's do it. So I'm going to turn that off. And we'll turn that off for now as well. So there's no recircling going on. We can even close that if we like. It's not that important right now. And what we must do, I've got this on manual just for preheat and turn the pump off. I tried to get back to the mash settings then and it wouldn't go because I was in manual mode and my profile was still actually running even though I've turned the pump off. So I stopped the profile. Then we can go home and my mash setting is there. I've done a little setup. It's very easy to do. I'll show you how to do that in another video. But you can see I've got 67 for an hour, 76 for 10 minutes. Uh, and then I'll put it on 80 for 20 minutes while I'm sparging. And I'll probably put it into manual when we go into boil or switch over to the boil profile. I didn't have the grain basket in during that. There is the grain basket there. You can see it in my other videos. You've got to try and get all these legs sitting up while you put it in, of course. Which can be tricky sometimes. And also when you put it in, you don't want to knock your pickup tube or your whirlpool arm out of the way, so just make sure you put it down away from your pickup tubes because they are adjustable. Now we've got that in, you can run it again 
because often your mash pipe will suck some heat. I won't put this on because that'll go down there, but I can still recircuit through the whirlpool. And we have lost a little bit of heat, only a degree. But I'll leave that on just for a second while I get the grain ready, and that'll bring us back up to 10. I've got 22 litres in there to start with this brew with. Before you mash in, just make sure you turn off the heating so you're not heating to 72 anymore. As usual, there'll be links in the description for the recipes. Basically, it's 60% Pale Compass Voyager Malt, 23% Vienna Schooner Malt, 11.5% Munich Schooner Malt, and 7.5% Roast Barley. They are all Voyager Malts, but as home brewers, that can be hard to get. And that's why when you look at my recipes, you'll see that I've substituted a lot of the grains for other brands, but it's turned out just fine. You can see there we're quite full. It's 22 litres of water and about 5.65 kilo of grain. So this is the most I've put in. I've done a few five and a half kilos. And this recipe just went a little bit over that. And I dropped, I was going to brew my usual 24 litre batch, but I dropped it down to 23 litre just so I didn't have to put so much grain in, but I've still got, yeah, 5.65 kilo in there. I'm not sure how you'd go with six kilo. In hindsight, I probably would have used 23 litres mashing, but that also lowers your sparge, which is gonna lower your efficiency, of course. This is the fourth batch in this system, so I'm still learning. Right, I think we're going to be good to go, just for the start. We can come back and give it a stir. The other trouble we have here, for you guys at least, and for me really, is we can't see. Once the lid's on and things are going, we can't really see what's going on at all unless you lift it up. And you do have to be careful because there will be hot steam coming out of there and sometimes you can lift that up like that especially if you uh, you know mash out temps and things and uh, that can really burn you quite easily but we connect this back up our recirc pipe from the top here make sure it's off again now you can't see that but it's we might be able to it's off there we're in our mash profile I'm going to go into time delay and I'm going to have time delay, no time delay. Yeah, and then press play. And that alarm saying we're going into the mash temp is starting. And we've got 59 to go. So we'll go back here. And the mash has started now. It's at 67, but we haven't got the pump going. So if we start the pump, then we can come over here. And the pump isn't actually running. Oh, the pump's running, but we're not going anywhere. All the valves are shut off. So we can lift this up a little bit if we like. And just slowly turn it on. Oh, see? That was a tiny bit, and I just got squirted. That shouldn't have happened. And you, you, like, uh, that's pretty low, but if you do it much more than that, it's just squirting over the sides and down here. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do. It's up to you if you turn it on higher when you lower it, because you know you're not going to get wet. You've got to remember, though, to turn it off before you lift it, because you will get squirted. So that's it really. I mean, you could throw the whirlpool on a little bit if you wanted to, just to keep water circulating around down the bottom. It might even make temperatures a little bit more even, but I wouldn't put it on full, because you but you know, it wouldn't hurt. The brew I did just before this video, I got rid of the spray ball and used a bit of hose. For this video, I put the spray ball back on just to show, you know, how it works. But in my opinion, 
I'd rather use a piece of hose. The hose uh, can direct the wort straight down into the malt besides, you know, a lot of it just spraying off the sides and going off the edge. You don't have to worry about blockages with a hose. It's just a whole lot easier. And my wort cleared up a lot cleaner with a little bit of hose. I came back and gave it another stir after a few minutes just to make sure it was completely wet. I'm going to leave that just a couple more minutes and we'll take a pH reading out of interest. But I'm going to keep this simple and we'll just try a strip, hey? Keep this simple. These are 3.8 to 5.4 testing strips and that's good enough just to see what sort of area we're in. I'm just going to turn that off again valve and we should be able to get a drop out of there that's all we need turn this up again I found with these strips if you try and read it immediately, it's a bit problematic. But you just leave it till it sort of starts to really soak in and nearly dry up and you'll get a better indication. We're not as dark as the 5.4 here, but we're darker than the 5.1. I don't know how well that'll turn up on that camera. There's a tinge of the green, aqua. I did aim for 5.37, I think it was saying. So I reckon, yeah, that's pretty close to there. That 5.4. That's good. It's been keeping temperature quite well. Must have just went through a heating cycle then. But it's usually uh, pretty good. And try and have a look as we go in the mash out. Got quite a bit of flow there. Finish the hour at 67. And what it should do is start heating to 76. But the timer shouldn't start till it gets to 76. Alright, so we've moved into the second step, but the timer hasn't started. But you can see the red of the heating elements on. And so once that gets up to 76, you can hear the element coming on, if you can, over the pump noise. Then the timer will start for that 10 minutes. Mash out. In the brewery they might not mash out, but we've got the option to mash out here. It's easy for us to do it and that'll just help stop any conversion and also uh, if the wort happens to drop under that 67 while we're mucking around trying to get up to boil and things uh, it's not going to continue chewing down on those long chain sugars and turning them into simple sugars because we've mashed out we'll have killed all those enzymes off and we'll keep our nice body that we wanted in the beer so that's why mash outs are important so i'm going to suppose with about 14 litres I'll try and do this so you can see it. A bit awkward. Oh. And we've got to sort of shake it, make sure those legs fall down. Oh, the missing one. Sit on there. Now we're on. It doesn't sit up very high. It sits quite down low. I don't want to talk too much because I've got a sparge, but I'll show you when we get there. Let's get it flowing first. Again, you do have to be careful because it, it can just go down the side. I can see that here just going down the side, which isn't ideal. So I try and keep it in the middle and try and keep it slow. Slow as so it's not coming over the edge. We're going a little bit fast now, but I'm one-handed. And I'm going to try and show you on video what not to do. Uh, I might miss that juggle on my phone. But if I see if I bring the hose over here. See that cow? You can see it going down the side there. That's not ideal. That means a lot of it is just going straight down the side and not through your grain. And that's not what you want. 
So I opted for the 14 and a half litres. Uh, and one of the reasons I did that is you'll see in a minute, I'll move the camera, but what happens is this mash basket as it is starts sitting in the wort while it's still draining. So when you lift it out, unless you want to stand here and drain it or you fashion some sort of uh, like trivet or, or, or oven shelf for it to sit on, uh, there's a lot of uh, wort or water stuck in the in the mash bed right unless you've got a pulley it's a, it's a bit hard to to hold it up it's very tight to start with then you're holding it up here and unfortunately due to the design of this it's really hard to use a trivet because of the little legs on the, on, the, on the basket we'll go through this in another video I'm not sure if you can pick that up but yeah the basket is in the wort and to get my amount pre-boil that I need to at least get 23 litres out of here easily there's not much I can do about that and unfortunately it makes it really hard to guess how much work you've actually got in here because well one it's hard to read the etching and two yeah because the basket's in there it's all going to be wrong I need about 30 litres 31 litres pre-boil and to get that this is just the way have to do it. It doesn't quite fit in my usual pot unfortunately so I've sort of got to try and do just a bit of a, a pick up and hold it over the top a bit which is really hard with one hand. This is probably not good for it but I'm collecting more word I guess if I need it. And so I said I needed about 30 31 there's 35 it's 32 and a half. So we'd be just over 30. Maybe 30 and a half litres I reckon we got here. I'd rather would have got a little bit more. But I'm collecting more wort. If I need it. Well, it's probably enough for mixed up for a reading. Chill that down. I'm also going to get a little bit to put in my other reader. That's just a steel coffee filter. I found it. You know, less waste. We want it to end up about 10.52. So depending on what boil off we get today, we're going to want it from mid 40s to 50. And that one is saying 40, about 42. Which is what Beersmith said, but then it's not going to get to 52. We'll try it in my other one. Yeah, it's saying 42 as well. So we're meant to get to 52. I don't think we're going to. We won't boil off 10 points, I don't believe. In an hour. Firm cap's always a good idea. I've been sitting here thinking about it, and because I think we're a little bit down, 42, we're not going to get to 52, I don't, I don't think we'll boil off 10 points. What I might do is add the extra liquid that was draining out of the basket out there, uh, and even though that's not going to raise the numbers, essentially, but it will raise the volume, the, the numbers might not change at all, but it gives us more to boil off. So what I'll do is I'll add that liquid, boil for 10 minutes, check the gravity again, and see where we're at then. I'm not sure how much I've got. I just filtered that through just in case. Another one. About a litre. It's probably not enough to do what I want to do, but I'm going to add that in anyway. And so a litre there... I can easily boil that for another 10 minutes without, you know, and come back and still be at my volume I'm going to want to be at to start the boil, the official boil. Yeah, so after adding that, that's the 32 and a half litre mark, which are probably 32 litres. 
All right, I'm going to call that the boil. Because I put that extra leader in, I'm actually going to, I'll go an extra 15 minutes, I reckon. So before I put the hops in, even, I mean, it wouldn't really matter to put the hops in now, but I'll wait. I'll do it traditional. Uh, but we'll change that timer from one hour. We'll go 15. Oops. 15 minutes. And then we'll put the hops in and start our hour timer. I only expect three or four litres off boil off an hour so I've added a litre you know 15 minutes is probably close to get that litre off you could really you know stop the boil take the volume measurements take the bitterness uh, the gravity measurements and do it like that but I'm just going to run with this from here on we're going to be close I don't know what the exact numbers are going to be but we'll be closer than we were before all right we've just got about six seconds left I might just stop that timer. Oh, too late. Oh, come on. All right, I'm going to add, I'm going to start my 60 minute timer. Get it ready to go. One hour. I'm just going to take a little sample for a reading. We will take a reading. I wasn't going to bother, but out of interest, I will. There's 16 grams. In the original recipe, they used the Australian hop Ella at the 60 minute, and that would be because it's got a high alpha acid. I didn't have any Ella, and they used Northern Brewer later in the boil for a sort of a flavor addition at 15 minutes. So I bought a packet of Northern Brewer, and I used Northern Brewer at 60 minutes and at the 15 minute mark. Now the 60 minute mark, if you are using another hop for bittering, you want to get that about 14.5 IBUs at the 60 minute. And then we're throwing in some Northern Brewer at the end for about four and a half IBUs extra. It's a quite low IBU beer, around 19 IBUs all up. For those interested, mine was 16 grams of Northern Brewer at 60 and nine grams of Northern Brewer at 15 minutes. We've got 15 minutes to go. There's our flavour hops, which is 9 grams of Northern Brewer for the last 15 minutes. Not much there to go in. Now I'll take some word off and I'll mix in some Werflock and some PVPP. In there we've got PVPP, Werflock and some yeast nutrient. Just because it's dark beer doesn't mean you want junk left behind. All right, there's only about 20 seconds left of the boil now. Not long to go. I will uh, I will whirlpool it just for a second, just to try and center any trube, and then let it settle for five, 10 minutes. Then we're gonna go straight through my chiller, which might be a little bit hard to see here. Here goes the timer. So we'll turn off the boil. Boil stopped. Just let it settle down for a second. But you can see my plate chillers here. I'll move the camera in a minute. So off, I can turn the pump on. And we should get a little bit of a whirlpool. There's no whirlpool hops or anything, I'm just centering the tube. And it rattles. And really, it doesn't take much. I used to do it with 30 seconds with a spoon in my old 40 litre pot. Just by hand, easy, 30 seconds less, and it made an awesome tube cone. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that settle for a little while. I'm gonna use my plate chiller today. And so we're gonna use the pump to go through it. And I've taken, I've had the cap on that and kept it clean because it hasn't been opened. But I've just taken the cap off and sprayed that with some uh, alcohol sanitizer. Could use star center, of course. And I've got some, uh, you know, cables in here that I'm going to hook up and put through my plate chiller. Just taking it into boil volume, and it's a little bit hard to see with all that steam, but we're just under the 27 and a half litre mark. But it shouldn't be too hard to see. Boil kettle, uh, it goes down through the normal exit into the pump. Out the back of the pump, it's going to come in through here, and then out through here. 
into the fermenter. The hose isn't quite in there yet, it's still in the sanitizer down the back there. I need to turn the hose on. So I've got hot wort coming in this side, which means I've got hot water coming out that side. So I've got cold wort coming out this side, so there's cold water going in this side. They go against each other. Now before I turn this on, I'm going to just take it off that chiller, the input of the chiller. Go into a bucket. That way if there's any troub or bits of hop or whatever you put in there, it's not going to get stuck in my plate chiller hopefully. So it can't get through yet, this is off. So I can turn the pump on, that's not coming through. It's trying to go through here and it's trying to go through this recirc pipe but they're off. But it's okay, it's a magnetic drive pump, it doesn't matter. But once I start turning this blue handle here, it'll start coming out through here. I don't want to go full bore. Yeah, see a bit of junk. I'm just going to dump that. I don't know, it's probably half a litre. That way, that junk isn't going into my plate chiller. Oh, it smells good. Go okay, straight up to the plate chiller. I'll go and turn the hose on and we'll get chilling. All right, the hose is on for the plate chiller. Now again, we can do the same here if we want, just in case you think there's been something in your chiller. There shouldn't be, but... And you can run the pump again, just for a second. Just to, you know, get out the, any lines. We'll go through the plate chiller first. Wouldn't do much this time. There we go, that's enough. I don't think there was anything come through there that was bad, of course. Let's go straight into my fermenter. Now, of course, if you're going to control the flow, you control it on the outside here. You don't control it on the inside. So let's just turn up a little bit. Get that flow happening just a touch. We don't want to go too fast. It is wood fairly cold here today so the ground temperature for the water I should be able to go that fast and I've got the temperature here I can check it's coming out at it's going down eight, under 18 it's going to be about 18 is coming out at now if you can see that from there that's probably good so I'm not going to get much colder than that here It'll always be a degree or two above your ground water at least. Now I want to make sure that's not going to come flying out when I'm not looking. I'll get a clamp and clamp that on. You can't see the pickup tubes from this angle, but you might want to slow it down once you get near the pickup tube so you don't start vortexing and start pulling air. Depends how much you, you want out of it. I'd rather leave a bit behind so you leave the, all the tube behind. But there's some people that just want it all, you know, so they just tip it all and they tip up the pot. I don't go that far usually unless I really have to. Down past the five litre mark. All right, that'll do there. It's gone down to about there. I still could have got another couple of litres out. Maybe two litres, but I'm gonna stop there. With these fermenters, well, they don't have markings on the inside. So it's, you know, it's got a little bit hard to tell how much you got. I can see the top there. But of course you can do the maths. So now I'll just take that out, put the pill in, put the yeast in, stick it in the ferment fridge. As far as yeast, you use 3470 or your favourite swash beer yeast. Getting dark in here, but that's a nice clear wort. I don't know. Yeah, you can, should be able to sort of see it there. Nice, clear, clean wort. Smells lovely. I'm going to take a reading and see what the gravity is. I think we'll be a couple of points under, probably. And that's this is where you can decide whether you add sugar or not and top it up. Don't have to chill this because it's been through the chiller. I reckon we'll be a couple of points under again. We're looking for 52, but I reckon we'll be 1050, which is quite low for the amount of grain we used. Right, hopefully that's enough rinse through.
ten fifty. Yeah, two points on, two points down. I sort of guess that would be the case. So there's not much to talk about during the ferment. I actually use Nova Lager, which I probably shouldn't have, but it fermented perfectly right down to where I wanted it to at ten thirteen. So I started at fifteen degrees for a couple of days, and by the time it was down to ten twenty one, it's time to bump it up. So I bumped it up to seventeen. Then I bumped it up to 18, and then I bumped it up to 19, and it was done very quickly. Because it's not a hoppy beer, I was comfortable to let it sit there, even though it was done for a while and clear up. So I think it was about 10 days all up. But I've got one of mine here too. This one is not in my kegerator, but it's bottled off the keg that's in the fridge behind me. So I bottled this off about 10 minutes ago. My head is a touch little bit darker, only just. There isn't much in it. I think my beer, oh, it's only a touch darker. There's not much in it. That is a perfect clone. And there's a reason the beers are a perfect clone of my recipes, because they are the actual recipe, not something that I've made up. So just before we go, I want to thank my patrons again. I want to thank Nathan Munt and the brewery and everyone down there, his wife especially, for giving me the recipe to give to use. Enjoy it. Thanks, patrons. Thanks, viewers. Like, subscribe, share, and all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Get into it. I think swash beers are a great beer uh, for people that don't like a big heavy stout, but it comes to winter. I mean, this is a summer beer too. A swash beer is an every time of the year beer, but it sort of suits winter, being everyone's into their dark beers. But this is easily very drinkable and very easily a summer beer too. <sighs> Cheers.